Hello again. Uh, been a while since I made a video. I've had a couple of people ask me about kilns and annealing. And so I thought I'd make a video on some of that and uh, see how it goes. Anyway, uh, first off, let's talk about why you need a kiln. You need a kiln to anneal the glass. So why do you need to anneal the glass? I'm going to start out first off with three simple little facts about glass. First off, glass is not a solid. It's a semi-cool liquid. That was a mystery for a long time as to why that was. And they've learned uh, just recently that it has to do with the structure of the crystals when it solidifies tries to solidify, the structure doesn't fit tightly together. Solids have a melting point. You can think of uh, ice as an example. Ice, when you take, if I took a piece of ice and stuck it in that flame, it would just turn into water. It would go straight from a solid to a liquid state. The same with iron or gold or silver or even aspirin they have a melting point, and it's a very specific melting point. You can identify these, the uh, material by its melting point. Glass, on the other hand, softens. Okay, the viscosity changes. It doesn't change to a liquid. It just changes to, just the viscosity changes, and the hotter you heat it, the, the less viscous it becomes. The second fact is that glass is a poor conductor of heat. That's why I can heat this ball red hot, then I can hold it just a couple of inches away and it's comfortable to my fingers. It doesn't burn my fingers. Okay. If I did that with an iron rod or a nail, it would burn my fingers. I didn't want to drop it when it gets so hot. The third fact is that uh, matter when it's heated, it expands, and when it cools, it contracts. So those are the three facts to keep in mind when we're talking about glass and the need for a needle. Now, as that cools, the outside is cooling much faster than the inside because it's a poor conductor of heat. And the outside is contracting on the inside, which is cooling much slower, and that introduces stress into the glass. And if that were a large enough ball, when it reached about 400 degrees, the stress in the glass would reach the point that it would crack. And those pieces that don't crack are going to be much more prone to breakage than a properly annealed piece of glass. So annealing does two things for you. First off, it relieves the stress in the glass. And the second thing is it allows the glass to cool without reintroducing stress into it. So that when the glass is fully annealed, you have a happy piece of glass that's not prone to breakage. Pretty strong. Now there are several ways to anneal. If you're making fairly small pieces that can stand the cooling without breaking, and you can batch anneal those, make a bunch of them, then put them in the kiln, then anneal them. The other way is to garage the uh, pieces. So that once you're finished, you stick them into a hot kiln to keep them hot, and then you load the kiln, kiln up throughout the day, and when you're through garaging, then you uh, uh, run the kiln program to anneal all the pieces at once. Uh, different people garage at different temperatures, and I've seen temperatures up to 1,000 degrees used. I use 750. If you keep the temperature above 450, you're, go you're going to be okay generally. So, uh, 400 degrees is about where borosilicate will crack if it's going to crack. There's a couple of temperatures that you need to be aware of. The first one is the annealing temperature, and that varies from uh, from borosilicate to the soft glasses, the COE is important there. The manufacturer will publish the annealing temperature uh, for their glass. For borosilicate, that's generally 1,050 degrees or within just a couple of degrees of that. 
a mean temperature is the temperature at which uh, a quarter inch piece of glass will have all stress relieved in one hour. All right? The other temperature is the stress point, and that temperature is the temperature at which below that well, below that temperature, stress is no longer introduced into the glass. And for borosilicate, that's a roughly 950 degrees. So, in order for me to anneal a quarter inch piece of glass, I'm going to put it in a kiln at 1050 degrees and hold that temperature for one hour. And then I'm going to let the temperature drop over another hour to 950 degrees. So one hour at 1050 and then reduce the temperature slowly or gradually uh, to 950 degrees over the second hour. And then I turn the kiln off or let, let the program in so the kiln uh, shuts down and just let it cool to room temperature at the normal rate. And for my kiln, that's probably about three or four degrees a minute. If I were going to anneal a, a half inch piece of glass, then I would double that. I would have hold it at 1,050 degrees, the annealing temperature, for two hours, and then I would let it cool to 950 degrees over a period of two hours, and then the kiln shut off once again. Three quarters of an inch, and you go up to three hours. One inch, you go up to four hours, etc. So the thicker the piece of glass, the longer you have to anneal it, and that can bring some pretty high annealing times if, uh, if it's a large piece of glass. So I make a bunch of pieces. Some of them are different, or they're different sizes. Then I'll run the kiln program for the largest size that's in the kiln. Now you have to be careful sometimes with that because some of the glass, colored glass, uh, change color the longer they're in the kiln. So uh, sometimes you have to adjust how you're doing things based on what colors you're using as well. So. Okay, let's talk about the kiln. Mine is an even heat, even heat GTS 1813. It's a top loader. It has uh, elements in the top and elements running around the side. It is 18 inches wide and 13 inches tall. Mine runs on 220 volts. You can get kilns in 110 volts or 220. 220 is a little more efficient. So it might save you a little bit of money. This one has a uh, digital electronic controller, a Ramp Master 2, and you'll really want that when you uh, get to uh, the, the annealing program. So plan on that. One thing that I would do different if I were buying another kiln is I would get a front loader. Uh, a top loader is okay, but for sculptural work, when you're in and out of the kiln a lot, the uh, front loaders are just a lot more convenient. And then, let's see, in order to protect this fire brick, this fire brick is very soft and very uh, porous. So to protect that fire brick, I don't use, I don't put stuff directly on the floor. I have a shelf, a ceramic shelf. I'll put it in here. It's sitting on half inch kiln post, so it's, rough, it's roughly a half inch off the bottom of the uh, floor of the kiln, and that's what I put my pieces on. That protects the fire brick. Now, the kiln shelf also has a protective coating on it, too. It's called kiln wash. It's just a powder. I don't know if you can read that or not. This is Paragon High Fire Kiln Wash. And you just mix that with water and you paint it onto the shelf with the paintbrush. And you put it in very thinly, let the coat dry, put on a second coat, etc. Three or four coats generally enough. Some other things you may want are some kiln posts. That's what these things are here. They're little uh, ceramic posts of different heights. That's half inch, that's one inch, that's two inch. I have some fire brick uh, that I'll set inside the kiln when I'm doing pendants and what have you. And then I'll use a stainless steel mandrel and I'll hang the pendants on the mandrel, set it on top of the fire brick. Of course, that's going to be sitting down inside the kiln. So some things like that. 
freestanding pieces, I just set them in the kiln and let it go. Not a big deal. Anyway, that is what I know about kilns and annealing, and uh, uh, hope you enjoyed the video.